Right. I'm not sure if we're back. Let okay. me see. So theoretically we're back, but it's very possible that everybody's gone home. <laughs> if they've been frustrated at the uh, the technical side, I think we're live again, both on YouTube and Facebook. Um, if you are out there, dear students, big apology. It's my oh, fault. Yeah. yeah, we're back. Welcome back. back. I've had another technical hitch, a technical problem. Um, these things do happen online, but I do apologize. I I'm so happy that you've waited, actually, that you're still there. There's a few people joining us. Um, thank you so much for your patience. Thank we you. do apologize. I apologize. <laughs> OK, I think we're back in. Um, so people are still with us. So let's go back. We were talking about Fiona. What were we talking about? Old buildings. And a few people mentioned some old buildings near where they live. Yeah, that was right. Somebody from the mentioned this 17th century um, Punjab building, right? Okay. Yeah. Good. And Let's... it's such a huge topic in IELTS, that whole thing about civilization and um, even architecture and explorers and settlers. Yeah, so it's a, it's a huge topic. Great. So this is very relevant and uh, one that will be very useful for everybody, I think. Definitely. Okay. So let's have a look at the title. So I'd always start with obviously the title and even a subtitle. Oh, I missed this one. Okay. <laughs> Remember. Um, <laughs> does anybody know this site? Very famous place. I wonder if you know where it is or what it is. Ancient site. It looks um, almost Asian to me, but I'm probably wrong. I'm looking at the comments. I wonder if anybody can get it. Let's give have give a you a few more seconds to catch up. I will. Let's see. April says Japan has a number of old castles. Oh, beautiful Japan. Pradip says Spain. Hikran, where have you gone? You said Peru. And Denny right. says Machu Picchu. It is. And is that how you pronounce it? Does anybody know? Machu Picchu? <laughs> <laughs> we'll never find out. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Great. OK, so it is Machu Picchu and that's what the whole reading is about today. Let's have a look at the title again, Keith. Yes. Machu Picchu in Peru, the lost city. OK. So I'd like everybody to just read that title and the subtitle, and this should really help you start thinking about what type of text it is. I always talk about there being two types of reading texts, and it's really important that you know which one is which, because it'll help you read faster. You'll know what to expect. So, so here are the options, Keith. Maybe some of you know these two choices. If you press enter again um there are two types of texts and the first one i just call factual uh, kind of just description facts they tend to be passage one sometimes passage two and then passage three is a bit more difficult the kind of passage where you get theories and lots of people with different opinions and trying to find evidence and to prove their theories. So what would you expect from the title? Do you think this will be factual, describing the place? Or do you think it will be more opinion based? Any thoughts in the comments? Let's have a look. Let's see what people say. I think this is a tricky what do you one. Think? Mm. Me personally, the lost city, my at first glance, it sounds kind of factual about cities, but lost kind of suggests, well, maybe it's his opinion that it's lost, but is it everybody? Does everybody think? I don't know. Let's ask the students because we've got some interesting ideas from the students. I say there's only a choice, right? Okay. Um, me, sure, it says factual. Mm-hmm. Khan says factual. Daniela yeah. says factual. Um, Imad says B, opinion based. Um, okay. Maria as well. Yeah. 
What's the okay. Answer? Well, if you go to the next slide, I'll give you the first paragraph, and this should really definitively tell you um, whether it's going to be a, a fact, kind of story based uh, text or, or opinion. So I'll, I'll let you read that for a minute, if that's okay. Yeah, let's everybody, you can go ahead and read. fall asleep with this music <laughs> is that you playing the piano Keith? <laughs> i would like to say so but no <laughs> okay great so so now now that we've seen the the text the first paragraph does that make it any clearer because see razwana saying it's factual most people confirming factual yeah Definitely. It is it's factual and descriptive. And the reason why it's important is when you get something like this, it, it usually goes in order of time, in chronological order. And, and that really helps you with reading speed, makes everything much faster when you're looking for the questions. And we'll, we'll see how that works as well today. Okay, so there's a bit of controversy. Should you read the statements first or should you skim the text first? I wonder what everybody thinks. Right. Comment if you want. So the statement is the... What do you uh, think? Yeah. Mm, statement, should you read the statement first or read the text first? Oh, I don't know. There's a lot, there's a lot of different teachers say different things here. Right? Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. Let's see what the students say. Uh, okay, we've got Lynn says text. Mm -hmm. Vin says skim the text first. Mm -hmm. Fam says statement first. Yeah, I, I was thinking that? about. <laughs> I was thinking about this last night that if you go into a shop and you don't know what you want to buy, compared to if you go into a shop and you've got one goal, you know what you want look for you go into the shop and come out again which which one is faster and and to me it's when you know what you're looking for then yeah. you'll just go and find it more quickly so i would always say read the statement first um and then go to the text to skim <laughs> so yes. i know people disagree with that but um let me show you a few tips what you can do with this statement maybe you could share some some of yours as well. So first thing, some strategies here, of course, look for the capital letters. The first one there, you've got Bingham, the name, you've got South America, Inca City, that, that will take you immediately to where you need to be. So you haven't wasted time skimming the text, you've, you've gone to find what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, next thing then is to underline keywords and keywords aren't always what you think they might be. They're not always the main words. I wonder in this sentence, Keith, what, what do you think is a keyword there? Um, the or key phrase. words, I, I think that they're, they're not the nouns. They're not like Bingham or South America. I think it's like in search of. Exactly. Exactly. It, it's almost like the word that manages the sentence. It's, it's well, what are you looking for? Why did he go to South America? Did he go to look for this city or, or did he go on holiday? Exactly. So that start creating that meaning in your mind before you go and look for evidence. Yes. Okay, so the next key strategy would be um, what we just said. Make a quick guess. Think about the meaning of the sentence. Um, do, do you think he went just on holiday? He found it by accident, possibly, or, or did he go looking for it? So a quick kind of educated guess about the, the statement. And then there's one last tip. 
the last one. I can never remember that. <laughs> Search for paraphrase. Um, yeah. So then when you go and look for evidence, you're, you're looking for in search of so that you're you're thinking, OK, he was looking for something, maybe um, synonyms, maybe of, of city, town, went to, travelled um, or antonyms could be what? Antonym. Could what be... is an antonym exactly? Yeah. And what could be just like something opposite, like it, it was a hot place, but actually he found it was a cold place. Or it could be just a negative. He didn't go to South America or he wasn't looking. For, so we're looking for negatives, the opposite. So we can see if it's false. Mm. Yeah. OK, so let's do this one. So from your your guessing already, do you, do you think now that this is going to be true, false or not given? So remember, oh. Let's let's do this first. Okay. Sorry, keep that's all right. Next all right. Time. Yeah. So you've, you're keeping that in mind. But another strategy, because people struggle with not given, is a strategy we're going to practice today, which is to turn this statement into an, a question. So mm -hmm. you you are looking for the answer. So what kind of question could you, Keith? Maybe what kind of question would you turn this statement into? I like that you're making me the student and making me work. I like that. That's good. Um, it's easier for people. It's difficult to type. But <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so make it into a question. Bingham went to South America. Well, the first thing I would say is, did he go to South America? Yeah. Perfect. The first one. Yeah, so a short yes, no question, isn't it? Just did right. he? Yes, he did. No, he didn't. Yeah. Okay. What other kind of question? Maybe a more open question. A more open question. And I'm going to steal the idea from Razwana. And Razwana just Great. said, um, where are you, Razwana? Come back. Why he went, I'm stealing that. That's great. Why okay. did he go to yeah. South America? Seems like a good question to me. Exactly, because then we'll find the reason. Did he go in search of the city? Yes. So those two oh. questions are perfect. And you can call them short answer yes no questions or those more open wh questions right. so you're you're searching a bit more more deeply for the answer okay so i think now let's put the text and the question together on the next slide yep. and i'd like everybody to comment just do you think the statement is true false or not given so Bingham went to South America in search of an Inca city. True or false? Not given. What do you think, Keith? Right. Um, true, false or not given. Bingham went to South America. Let me have a look. Well, hang on. First line. Yes, he arrived in South America in 1911. So it's definitely he. Yes, he did go there. Mm -hmm. um, he was ready for something. Da, 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 his goal ah now that's interesting it says his goal which is like an objective which is or a reason for doing something so i'm wondering if that last sentence is leading me to the answer why did he go what was his goal um and it was to locate the remains of a city called vitkos the last capital of the inca civilization Exactly. So am I on the right lines? You're, yeah, absolutely. You you said his goal and we knew that he was looking in search of something in the statement. And that's that's a synonym. Not, I mean, not exact synonyms, but the, the meaning is the same, isn't it? It's a paraphrase. Yeah. He was looking for something, looking to find something. So, yeah, I'm just looking at the comments. Um, I think most people are saying true. So the answer is is keith the answer is it's true yes it is well done well done everybody yeah so can quite i a ask simple you a question yeah please a challenging question on behalf of candle but i think it's a good question put you on the yeah. on your feet no yeah. city for remains and i think what she means is it's not he was looking for a city but he was looking for the remains of a city so is it still true OK, so this is one of the things we look at a bit more closely in the lesson today, which is kind of 
overthinking it, thinking mm. too much and looking too closely at details. This is what I see sends people a bit off track. IELTS doesn't want to make it incredibly difficult for you. They just want to test your com comprehension and they're not going to use little words like that to, to confuse you. So uh, the remains of a city is a city. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. That's great. I thought that yeah. was a great question from Candela. Yeah, very good question. Um, and a great answer. So don't overthink it. It's not, IELTS is not trying to trick you or catch you no. out, right? It's just comprehension. Exactly. exactly. But it was a really good question, Candela. And thanks for bringing it up. It's nice. going to come up later as well. Yeah. Um, and, and Keith, um, things like the difficult words there, even Inca. I mean, yeah. what, what if you don't know the word Inca? Does, does it matter? I think here it, it doesn't matter at all. And in fact, when you look at Inca, because it's got a capital letter, you kind of yes. know it's a proper noun. It's a name of something. So in a way, because you've got Inca City in the statement, it doesn't matter if you know anything i mean i don't know much about inca civilization but i don't think it matters right exactly yeah so part of the training i know in the real exam you don't have time to do all of this but part of your training and preparation is going to help you ignore words that you don't need and um just guess meaning from from the context you'll you'll get used to that in your training definitely yeah. nice okay Great. So we had paragraph one was question one. Let's just compare what would a false or not given answer be. So mm. if we look here, Bingham went to South America in search of a relative, maybe a long lost member of his family. Would that be false or not given? So looking just at A. He went in search of a relative. Is that false or not given? What What do you think, Keith? Me, I think that's clearly false because we know he went in search of a city, not a relative. Exactly. So you can contradict it. You can say, no, he didn't go in search of a relative. He went in search of a city. So there's that kind of opposite or or contradiction yeah. yes exactly um and so keith you've told me that this the not given idea is is quite not new to you i know you're an expert but <laughs> you, you don't teach it so you know i can see your why it might be confusing yeah. if we look at b for example um he he enjoyed his trip to south america mm. is that false or is it not given he enjoyed his trip to South America. Um, so it says he arrived in South America in 1911. He was ready for his greatest achievement, the exploration. His goal was there's nothing about enjoying or there's no doesn't say he liked or he was looking forward to. Really, I don't think it's in there. Exactly. There's there's no emotion there, is there? There's there's no mention of his feelings. And this is a very common um not given statement they have something where there's emotion that is not in the text or there's a comparison that's not in the text like he preferred south america to north america that there's there's no mention of that in the text so we can't say that he didn't enjoy his trip we can't say it's false because we don't know how he felt about the trip. So that's a common uh, distractor. Yes. That's interesting. You, you're suggesting there, Fiona, that um, sometimes when it's about feelings or emotion, yes. that can be a not given kind of yes. answer. Interesting. Yes. That's good. And, and again, Keith, part of this training is I, I do train people to recognize them. My students say, oh, well, that's definitely now a not given. I know because of this. We'll, we'll look at another example later today. Yeah. Nice. Good. Move on. Okay. So that was statement one. Yeah. Let's just go to statement two and do the same again. So start getting into that habit. Um, so we said, look at capital letters. You've got Urubamba Valley. Yeah. Urubamba. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> um, 
Let's look at a few strategies. Oh, here, Keith, what do you notice? So statement two is in paragraph B. Yep. Statement one was in paragraph A. Yep. So we've got 1A, 2B. What, what does that tell us? Chronological. Exactly. Yeah. And this kind of question will certainly go in order, the same right. order as the text. So don't go back. Right. Always. Great yeah, don't go back. Don't going waste forward. time. Yeah. Keep going forward. Yes. As in life. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, mm. Can you just go to yes. the next thing? So with yes. the strategies. So we've got the same order as the text. Underline the keywords. What would be the keyword here? Oh, um, Bingham chose a particular route because it was the most common route. Uh, route mm. it was the most common uh, particular route or common route maybe something about yeah something why did he choose that route was it because it was the most mm. common route yeah i think so something like that okay okay um we we already had a true question and we always need to think about this balance remember this text has only four questions we've had one true um if you put all of them are true, what would you what would you notice? Um, you know, there's probably something not right. right. It's usually too true, maybe one false, one not given. So keep that balance in mind. Again, with preparation, that gets easier. Okay, okay what's next in the strategies? One last thing. Super, superlatives. Okay. What, what, what do I mean by superlatives? Where is the superlative there? Superlatives are things like um, the biggest, the longest, the tallest, the highest, the most beautiful. Exactly, yeah. And and these they use a lot because they're quite easy either to say the opposite or, again, maybe there's no comparison in the text. And these kind of extreme words like the only one, um, extreme words help mm. you with maybe not not given questions we'll we'll see later yeah so okay so sorry the superlative here is most common is that right the most common yes the most common route okay perfect so if you go to the next one excellent um most common routes yeah good I put a line under it and that's what we're looking for okay so can you guys again think about transforming this into a simple question it's a long statement, but just think of a simple question. He chose this route because it was the most common. Could you maybe quickly? Yes. Do a sh yeah. Or, or maybe just write the WH question that you would put. Yeah, I think it's a why question because it says because. So yeah. why because. did why did he um, why did he what why did he choose that route? <laughs> Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So the open question, WH, why did he choose it? And also we're focusing on on really was it the most common route? Ah, perfect. Right. Okay. So. Why did he choose? Was it the most common route? Ah, okay. Interesting. Good. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to show you the text again and play the music. If that's get on your piano again, Keith. You want me on the Have piano again? Have you got a guitar again? maybe? <laughs> it's going to be the piano again. Let me get my piano out. I'll give you a, a different tune this time. Okay, we and might need to. It's just going bit, a little bit too. To Sorry, yeah. No, it's all right. It's, I apologize. I try um, to make it as big as possible so it's easy to read. You know, when you do reading lessons online, it's quite hard to show I'll the text. Do, so, um, um, let me see. Actually, that's... if I can just take it as out and make it bigger. Ah, oh, lovely. Perfect. Perfect. So we're looking at statement two. He chose this special route because it was the most common route. Cue the music. Why oh, super quiet?
I wish I could play piano like this. <laughs> Okay, lots of yep. false coming up. Oh, Gail says she can't read it. Sorry, Gail. That's strange. Karud likes the music. Yeah. Okay, I, I think we've got a few not given, so let's let's look at it together. Yes. Give me a second. I'm just going to bring us back in the okay. scene. Okay. Okay, Keith, what do you think for this one? Okay. Um... Did he choose the most common routes used by travellers? Um, no. Well, there's something in in the middle about, I think it's line four, in the middle of line four. It says, almost all previous travellers had left the river at Oyantayantambu, which suggests that they took one route and he's mm. taking a different route. Exactly. Exactly that, yes. So we can find evidence that he didn't take the most common route at all. He took a different route. Exactly. So right. this answer is? So this one is, oh, false. It's false, yes. Yeah. So people are commenting. There's other bits of information in that paragraph that help us as well. Uh, the other people never saw it because they never passed through that area. Right. He saw it because he went down a track that had been blasted. It was a new track, so he didn't take the most common, exactly. Yeah, good, nice. Great, so we've got one true, one false so far. So the third one could be anything. <laughs> Let's have a look. <laughs> And I remember that you making... said there's a balance, right? That there's always going to be a there balance. There is a balance, there. exactly. Yeah, yeah. And not given is usually, uh, is rarely the first one. That's a little tip. Is that true? So the first one I, is well, rarely not given. Rarely. Okay. I've hardly ever seen it. If, if somebody can find an example, please send it to me. But uh, as a rule, they, they don't put not given first. Okay. I think I've seen it maybe once, but maybe it wasn't a Cambridge test. <laughs> right. Okay, so let's look at the key words here, first of all. And remember what we said, um, try to rephrase that in your mind, try to paraphrase it for meaning. Um, what, okay. Keith, what do you think? What, what, what does that sentence words? mean? Could you put it in your own words and give me the key words? Yeah. So the key words, um, he he understood the significant understood well he realized he realized how important Machu Picchu was so I think him understanding or realizing the importance of it I think that's exactly it he realized the importance of it but uh, great and and then the keyword keyword uh Nothing. significance um as soon as meaning immediately I think that's it immediately. Remember we talked about these extreme words. So those really give us clues. So as soon as means straight away. So do you think he looked at it and, and realized, wow, this is a really important place. So your your brain should be looking for that information. Great. Uh, nice. Okay. Good. And and a question? How would you question. turn that into a question? I'm just gonna I'm going to take us off, Fiona, and make it bigger yep. because a few people are saying they sure. can't read it just to make the, okay. the text bigger. Okay. So I think that might just because help a few people with phone, reading. It might be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the question, what could the question be? Uh, did he realise mm -hmm. the importance immediately? Lovely. 
Okay, so it's a short answer question. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. That would give you yes, he did. True or no, he didn't. False. Perfect. Okay. 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 Good. So if you could share the text, I think. Yep. There we go. Music, maybe, if you want. Music, maestro. <laughs> okay, bit of music. Let's do it. Maria says, when did he understand? That's good. Yeah, I think they've got it, Keith. Everybody's saying false and giving good reasons why. Didn't realize false, false. Maria as well. He didn't realize. I didn't, I didn't realize exactly. Perfect. Great. So we've got a real clear negative statement, clear negative evidence that he, he didn't understand the significance. Synonyms for significance? I was just going to say, excuse me, synonyms. Um, yes, significance, importance. Exactly. I, I notice synonyms, synonyms everywhere here. Realize, <laughs> understood. Yeah. Um, as soon as at this exactly. stage. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So you're constantly looking for evidence in, as we said, either synonyms or antonyms, something that is the opposite and here he didn't realize is the opposite of he understood right great excellent okay awesome. so what have we got now we've got two trues <laughs> one false so we've got That's one true. statement left yes shall we have a look at that one yes let's go straight in so he returned to Machu Picchu in order to find evidence to support his theory. Mm -hmm. Keywords. Keywords. Returned. Yeah, definitely. Um, the, the in order to is something about, again, because or goals. Yeah, so, so that goal again. So we're looking mm -hmm. for a goal. And what would the question be? question um did bingham return to machu picchu perfect or a why or question a yeah um let me see if some of the students can help me <laughs> Lucy, did he that's good did he go back um we've got from facebook why did bingham return perfect yes exactly. great Okay, so we're almost looking for two pieces of information. First of all, did he return? Yeah. And if he did, then why? Perfect. Nice. Lovely. All right, so we're looking for true, false, not given. Let's see the paragraph. Good. Music? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard somebody said, loving the peaceful vibe. Good. Guys, give you 30 <laughs> seconds to read.
everyone's not given perfect, no information there. Interesting, we've got one or two say true. Hmm. Okay, it might, it might be interesting to find out where the evidence is. If yeah, you think it's to... true. Go ahead. Go. Yeah, go ahead. No, I'm good. You go ahead. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so if you think it's true, can you point to the evidence that he went back? Where does it say he went back? I'm, I'm using a synonym there for returned. Is there another synonym that I missed? Return, go back, revisit. But so, somebody says there's nothing about return. Okay. And the Facebook user, you've said it says it's false. But do we know that he didn't return? Can we find any evidence about whether he returned or not? Hmm. So remember, if it's false, it, it would say that he he never returned or mm. um, simply he didn't go back. <laughs> mm. Is there anything there? Bingham made desperate attempts to prove this belief. So it talks about Bingham making attempts to prove mm. this belief, but there's nothing but did about he go going back? back. No, well, we don't know. Exactly. And I think this is what's tricky about not given because my students, when I when they say, yeah, but he made an attempt and I say, did he go back? And they say, well, maybe he did. But did he go back? Yeah. And you can't answer that question in the text. Yes, maybe the attempt was he went back. But if the text doesn't tell us that you you can't guess, you, you have to look for a synonym or a negative. That's really useful. Yeah. That's really good. Mahmoudul, I think, is it says the same thing. He says, we know he has tried exactly. to prove it, but we don't know how he tried or if he did. We just don't know. So interesting. So it, it's not given, right? Exactly. It's not given. Yeah. Mm. And if you can see the trick there, because it's got to find, he went there to find evidence to support his theory and it does give a goal it says to prove this belief he mm. tried to prove this belief but but still did he go back simple question that's all you need to ask exactly that's yeah. great and look this is interesting because look who's here in the chat with us oh i know i saw christiana, christiana Ronaldo. welcome Hello. nice to see you here. <laughs> good <laughs> to see excellent. you working on your english yes <laughs> doesn't need to <laughs> he speaks great english right yeah he does amazing yeah i wonder why okay. he's taking ielts maybe he's going to play with uh <laughs> with manchester united okay sorry carry on great uh, i think that that is it we've done our four statements so we've we've looked at the different um strategies i think you could go on there keith to yep. the next one okay so yeah, some of the things we've looked at today in in just that short text and short time um, about the order, the balance, developing this kind of feeling. Does it feel like it's a not given answer or a true answer? Um, looking for synonyms, looking for opposites and trying not to overthink things. Don't mm -hmm. ignore the details. Just look for, did he go yes or no? Um, We've looked at this text structure, which is factual, so it goes in order, that'll increase your speed. And also we've talked about that importance of background knowledge. Um, and you know, then if you know, if you've heard of Incas before, then you'll think, oh, I know what that is. You'll you'll skim it much better if you've got that kind of knowledge, mm -hmm. basic background knowledge. Yeah. Brilliant. That is great. Those those are really, really nice tips. Um and I think, yes, I mean, for the true, false, not not given, which is one of the most challenging areas of the IELTS reading, right? It's a very, very different question, difficult question to, to get right. But following you as a student, interestingly, has helped me see a lot of things there and understand the thought process you're going through, which is really interesting. 
Yeah, and the thought process the examiners, the test writers are going through. So they have to sit there and think, oh, how can I make this a false question? So the <laughs> only way to make it false is to say he didn't realize. Right. You know, think about how they're writing it and go through that process as, as you're training. I know in the exam, you've got 20 minutes, mm. you can't go through all this. But once you've spent time building up those skills, you'll you'll apply it much more efficiently and effectively. So it's, it's about the practice, right? As well as the actual yeah. test, it's the yeah. practice that you do that makes you more and more aware of how the examiner thinks, what you need to be yeah. looking for. Um, what do you recommend for practice? Okay, um, I, I do have a blog where I've listed about the five best sites, where they actually get their texts from. I've put it on the next slide. I think maybe Paula was going to put it in the link. Does, I think Paula does... and uh, Burns, who are also with us. Yes, let me just share it with everybody. Um, and guys, if, if, if Paula and Burns, you could share it in the Facebook group and the um, YouTube. It's, it's this one. Uh, let me say this one. The I, next uh, one, I think. Is it this one? Sorry, oh, that's the, it's the next one. this one. Yeah, so there, there's ah. just a, a blog on my website with the reading sources or resources. Yeah, um, but I would always recommend do the Cambridge books first, even if you go through them two or three times. That would always be the first um, resource before anything else do the cambridge books I, I know somebody who got like band eight because he said he just read them over and over again and he got used to those questions and those texts right yeah fantastic that's great so the cambridge books one to 16 there's 16 of those right that you can be yeah there are but i would stick with the more recent ones because the questions are quite different before say book nine i'd i'd, I'd work backwards start with okay. book 16 Right. Book 15, definitely, because they became a bit more sophisticated in their writing tech, uh, question writing techniques. Yeah. And you can see it. And now they're, they're very careful with, you know, what's a fair question and right. start with the most recent. Yeah. I'm waiting for 17 to come out. <laughs> <laughs> that will come soon. Now, we're going to spend a couple of minutes in a moment talking about your online course as well. Um, but we've also said we'll take some questions from students sure. here about IELTS. Um, I can pick out one or two questions, but if you see some as well, Fiona, sure. um, okay. here's one from Benaz, and I can guess the answer, but let's put it up. And let me just take away. She says, could you please speak about the possibility of actual tests repetition. Do the same questions come up again? In reading, I would say no. You won't get a question from a Cambridge book in a real test. No, they're very careful about the security of the questions and they, they wouldn't repeat a text. But you might get a very similar text, a similar topic, yeah. Right. Similar topic, but not the same. Okay. Yeah. We've got Mary. Mary, Mary, any suggestion for academic reading where it has usually given a long text? I, I think, Mary, do you mean if you've got a long text and you've only got 20 minutes, so you haven't got much time? I'm, I'm guessing that's what you mean. And, and yeah, I've, I, again, on my website, I've got a list of time management techniques, but basically it comes from what we did today, learning about the text types, um, knowing when to skip things, knowing where to find the information quickly with capital letters, first lines, things like that. If you practice that, it'll, it'll help you deal with these long academic texts, definitely. Mm -hmm. Nice, good. Ludzi shares says, should we just do practice only true false ng part of reading after this live? Ah. <laughs> I think it's really useful to really intensively focus on true false not given. Definitely, I, I think you'll start to see patterns. You'll start to see what I mean about guessing them. My my boss where I work, he, he says he can answer a whole IELTS test now without even looking at the texts, he says. He's, he's wow. been doing it for about 30 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Interesting. 
Pradeep says, how can we get into your sources? I think it means resources. Sure, that that's I've got tons, Pradeep. On, on my website, there's about 300 pages, I think, of free IELTS resources. Yeah. Um, I do have my own academy as well, a, a bit like Keith's. And one of my courses is going to be in Keith's academy as well. So in the academy, it's just a bit more, you get a bit more support and coaching, um, but there's still a lot free on my website that you can work through. And, and lots of people say they got seven just by using those and using Keith's lives. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've had a huge impact on people speaking, Keith. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I hope so. So your website, yeah, ielsetc.com. And I'll, I'll just mention this now because you, you've set yeah. up a page, which is um, slash Keith, which is, I think, if I'm correct, this is where students can go after this lesson and yes. download the PDF of this lesson. Of this lesson with the whole text and the whole set of questions and all the explanations. Yes. So you can follow up, go through the text yourself, but also you'll go on my email list and I send out a weekly email of tips with all my new podcasts and videos and I refer to other people's good stuff like Keith's as well. So you'll you'll get more information that way. And you have so much stuff. It's absolutely amazing. I don't know how you sleep, Fiona. I mean, you, <laughs> I you, you produce so much amazing work. It's really, really good. Um, I would, I'm going to ask you actually to talk a little bit about your course, your reading course, because Pradeep talked about resources and Liz, Lucy was asking about just true false and not given your reading course which is coming up on the keith speaking academy on friday tell us a bit about about that course and what what's happening there sure well i decided i have my own reading course in the members academy but time goes so quickly and they brought new books out so i decided to update it by focusing all of my uh, lessons my video lessons on on the newer books and texts and so it's a set of i think about 20 24 videos video lessons a little bit like this where we look at a question type and focus on the strategies that will help you with that question and it starts with the passage one texts um so it starts kind of quite easy and then gets gradually more difficult leading to the passage three long academic texts so i specially made it for keith's academy it, it's also available in my academy um but uh yeah that's it i think keith yeah <laughs> <laughs> fantastic so um i'll take those off da -dum, da -dum. it's on the key speaking academy it looks really exciting i mean I, i've been through the course and it looks really really good i mean you go through all the different kinds of texts and questions and give strategies and examples um i think it's great that course we are going to launch on friday and on friday then we're going to come back fiona and i um at the same time on YouTube and Facebook for another live session where we will talk about another area of reading, but we'll also introduce the course and the course will be available for people to buy. Um, we'll be offering discounts for three days for students who want to get the course straight away um, so that you can get that at a, a cheaper price. Um, and we'll be doing that on Friday to tell people all more about it. Lovely. Um, and also, Keith, on Friday, we wanted to ask for questions, didn't we? Um, the reason we did True, False, Not Given today was lots yes. of people asked about it. So we can do something similar on Friday if, if you let us know if you have any questions about reading. Yeah, exactly. So guys, if you have questions, do put them, um, do either put them in the chat or, or let us know um, so that on our next session, and as Paula says, the next live lesson will be Friday at 1pm Spain time, both Facebook and YouTube, um, then you can, we will focus on one area that you're interested in. Um, you can put either, I'm just looking for any questions now, you can put the question in the chat now or later. Um, I've also sent out a few posts on Facebook to ask people 
Um, great. I've seen one from Menaz saying, can we write TFNG, you know, the short form TFNG instead of the full word, true, false, not given? And absolutely, yes. Um, again, it's a shortcut. I would recommend it, actually. Just write TFNG. Right. And it doesn't matter if you write Y for true, Y, yes, or N for no. It, it doesn't matter. They're, they're looking to see if you've got the right answer. They're all marked by um, trained clerical markers. It's not marked by computer. Right. So they'll see you put T or Y and you'll get the point. Yeah. T or F. T, true, or Y for yes. Y for yes. Okay. Yes. For example, if, oh, true, if you. Yes or false. Yeah. Yes. Because there's a different question type, and I go through it in the course, which is yes, no, not ah, given. Okay. Um, but it doesn't matter if you write Y instead of T. Right. Do you Excellent. see what I mean? I yeah. Do. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, some things for you to be thinking about. We've got topic matchings, Blueski asked about. Um, Roswana mentions matching headings is difficult. Oh, yeah. As does Fahid as well, oh, as does one. Fam. Oh, look at that matching, matching. <laughs> matching. matching. Quite difficult to do it as yes. a live session because of the problems of, of reading the full text on yeah. a screen. We've had a few problems today. People couldn't see the text. And yeah. I try to avoid doing matching headings in live session because you really have to see the, the full text. But yeah. I'll, I'll see. I'll see what we can do. We'll have, we can have a look. We can maybe look at different yeah. tips or ideas of reading skills or different, yeah. different things as well. Um, all of that is great. Fantastic. Great. Well, just to remind people, um, if you want to get the the PDF from today, as Burns says, thanks for sharing, Burns, get the free PDF of the live lesson from today. The link is there. It's ilctc.com stroke Keith. Um, and you'll also, if you leave your email, you'll be signed up to um, the newsletter that Fiona does, which is great as well. And do join us if I've got it, the next session, come and join us on Friday. We'll be doing some more tips and ideas about reading, as well as introducing the course that um, the online course that Fiona has on the Key Speaking Academy and tell you all about of that. Brilliant. Guys, thank you all of you for joining us today. Um, I hope it's been useful and I hope you've uh, learned some new things. Fiona, thank you so much. How do you feel? Oh, exhausted now. It's been a pleasure, <laughs> though. Very exciting. <laughs> Fantastic. Great. Well, listen, thank you for joining us today. I'm sure the students all appreciate it. And um, I can't wait to be back here on Friday. Great. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Great. Thank you, everybody. Take care, all of you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheerio. Let's put some of that music again to go out on. Start playing your violin. I'm sure you're multi-talented. I do have a violin, actually. Yeah. Um, but it's it's not in the flat where I live. It's in another flat, so I have to go and get it. Mm. Mm. But maybe I need to practice because I don't play so much now. Do you play an instrument? The piano, yeah. Really? Maybe next time I'll drag my piano up here, yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. Excellent. A bit of piano music. Real piano music. Yeah. Great. Let's sign out. Cheers. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye.